Welcome back to Design Patterns for Game Developers. My name is Charles Hache, and today we're going to be talking about abstract factories. The abstract factory pattern is a way for some client to be able to ask some factory to build some product when the client only knows that they can ask the abstract factory for that product. It's important to note that the client doesn't know anything about the abstract factory, just that they can expect to be able to ask for a product from it. This is done through an interface. This allows us to create any number of factories that can specialize in making their own unique elements. These are often called concrete products. And we also have the benefit of being able to pass back those products as an abstraction. So I could be asking for a ball and the red ball factory will actually generate a red ball for me. I'm getting it back as a ball and I don't necessarily care that it's red. This kind of manipulation or understanding can be done either through inheritance as the red ball would be a type of ball, or it can be done through interface. I don't really care the fact that it is a red ball, I'm just going to throw it. Another way to look at this would be a food factory. A food factory could be asked by a grocer to make food, and the grocer could reasonably expect that food is going to be passed back as this product. For instance, a baker might be considered a food factory. They can be expected to make food, and with the food product being bread, for example. That would be your concrete product. Similarly, a butcher can also be a food factory, in that they can be asked to make food, but their product is going to be steak, for example. Now, both of these can be passed back as food, and they can be understood to be food by interface, but they can also be passed back as concrete elements. One thing to note is that the client should care as little as possible about the type of product that's being passed back. This way it helps to secure that layer of abstraction. So in our example, you might imagine that the grocer doesn't actually care what kind of food it is. What they're going to do with it really depends on how much it costs. They're going to end up selling it to the user. The user might come along and say, I need bread or I need steak. And the grocer can certainly look through their product list to see if they have them, and they would exchange that food in order to get currency. Again, the grocer doesn't care that it is a particular type of food, that it is steak or bread. The client cares. The grocer is going to be satisfied by the fact that it has some sort of a price. Of course, there's a lot more complexity that we can add to this, but for our purposes, this is going to be simple enough. 